Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So I'm still in the watercolour journey. So I think this is, well, this is picture six. Um, so this was in one of my books and it's just a little spray of leaves. And there's some black currants, I think, there. So I thought, we'll give them a wee go. It's not going to turn out like this. It's more just, it's more for a composition kind of reference. I've had a disaster as well, and I'm running low in watercolour paper. So I thought, we'll just need to use it. So I've been watching Christy the Painter, and it's the best video I've seen so far for giving watercolour technique advice. Um, she explains them all very, very well. And then she explains about how to use them at different times. So she talks about how they all work together. If you're doing one technique, then she goes over how another technique would work along with that technique. And that's what makes the difference. So whether or not I can put that theory into practice though, is we will find out. So I do have some branches that I'm thinking I'm just going to put in quickly so that I have got a kind of record of them where they go. Because when I try to add them in after, what happens is I don't get the angles properly. Right, happy with that just now. So I'm just going to do the the leaf shapes. Um, Okay, so I have sped it up to two and a half times and I have edited out some of the the gaps while I'm waiting or making decisions or it's drying, etc. So this first leaf had been done with wet on wet and then I soon forgot about wet on wet and just did wet on dry. It's actually quite hard to remember. Oh, I'm supposed to put the water down first right I'll do it in the next leaf and then I forget <laughs> so the YouTube video that I'm going to link in the description I was talking about she did give me the confidence to be oh what's the word a bit a bit less restrained um with what I was doing because you get wet on wet, wet on dry, but then there's wet on damp. And that was very much, if it was damp at all, I wasn't touching it. As she, she also also showed the lift-off technique for when, you know, the, the cauliflower bits start happening that you're not wanting. So, you know, it was really useful and it's just helped me be a bit more confident to try new things and realise that, Actually, you can make mistakes with this and it's not the end of the world. So I'm just putting down little bits, that kind of like confetti bits, just to look like sort of flowers in the background um, and leaves in the background as well. It's also to help with a bit of colour matching, um, sort of to get some of the shades that I'm using you know, in different areas of the picture. So I just mixed a uh, Indian red and a rose beige there and it gives a lovely dusky pink colour, but it was too strong for it, that stock on its own.
One thing I do find is I do tend to use wet on dry or wet on damp um, most of the time and also I keep going over and over and over the leaves trying to get them right and there reaches a point where you think it's just layers upon layers of paint and I think I don't really know what to do next but I'm hoping that will come the more I do it. So I'm not saying I'm doing a 100 day challenge because I don't want to I don't want to set myself a task that can end up feeling like a chore. But I do want to, um, I really do, I would like to learn watercolour technique to the extent that I kind of feel not just confident about what I'm doing, but kind of thinking, oh, right, this is what I want this to look like. So this is what I need to do to get there. I would like to learn those sort of skills. I actually think that it would actually be more helpful if I used a reference photograph for all, not just the sort of composition of where I want to place um, things on the picture and the shapes that I want to make, but to actually use it more for, you know, what is actually going on in the leaf. That might actually help me kind of think more about how much you really need to, you want to do to the leaf to make it look like what it should. Because I was just drawing it from my imagination and, you know, it was actually hard to know when, when, when do I need to stop now? Is my leaf good enough? I think the way I've edited it is quite funny actually because it looks like I've got arms coming from everywhere. Mm -hmm. It was just so that I didn't have um, lots of gaps. So when I was drawing in the veins, oh, they just looked big and heavy and cumbersome. They didn't look like little delicate veins. Um, I do end up pulling out a paintbrush that looks a bit like one of those liner brushes um, I'm not sure if it is or not and I suppose that would have helped because I'm using quite a big brush and it's probably not shaped for line work so this is really the start of where I just keep going over and over and over the leaves um, especially those top three because I don't like what I've done so I'll think right I'll try and fix it and all I'm doing is just adding on more layers um, though I do think the yellow and the red actually look really quite good there but um, because I keep going because I'm just not sure You can tell by my body language as well that I'm becoming indecisive and kind of frustrated that I don't know um, kind of how to push it forward because I've got my elbow on the table and resting my head on my hand. But that will come, that just comes with, the more I keep doing it, that will come and um, because I actually quite liked the bottom leaves, they weren't great, but they certainly, it did show that less is more, um, you know, to, to make it stand out, especially the one on the left hand side at the bottom. You know, I don't know whether I left that leaf alone because I was happy with 
the shape that it started with and it was easy to put in that shadow in the middle or whether I just didn't really notice it while I was doing the painting. It's definitely um, not like acrylics. I think as well that because it's acrylics I've always used, so you do reach a kind of um, a comfort zone where you know what to do and you know, oh, this is happening, this is what I need to do to fix it. And now I'm in territory that's like, well, I don't know what to do, I'll just keep painting it. <laughs> So when I was watching the video for beginners earlier on by the lady called Christy, she talked about different techniques which included wet on wet, wet on dry, wet on damp. She talked about glazing. She talked about ombre and about lifting off. And lifting off can be used for when you make an error but it can also be used in a positive way to actually create highlights and there was also scrubbing which is just about the way that you're using your brush and basically you're applying a lot of pressure and you're being a lot less careful about how you're brushing the paint onto the page um but what was interesting was she talked about these techniques but she talked about them with not just water she talked about them when you're using them with different colors at the same time so you could have already have a wet color on your page and then you're putting another wet color on top or you're doing the glazing, but it's whether the glazing could be on damp or it could be on dry. And then at the end, she did a picture as well, um, using all the techniques and explaining um, about when she's using it and what technique she's using it after and what technique she'll use next. And I think a lot of the times, a lot of the beginner tutorials I've watched, not all of them because I can't possibly watch them all, but... I think that she dealt with them singly, but then she also dealt with them in the different situations that you'll find them in. So you can see at the top, one of the black currants has bled into the leaf because I've painted it while they were both wet. So I used a dry paintbrush and the gap between the current and the leaf just to A, get rid of that meeting point, but also just to help remove that cauliflower edge as much as possible. So it's easier to deal with when I go back to it. Do you know what? I think I'll need to, you know, when you're doing your kind of research to kind of find out what you need to learn and things like that, it's kind of like, right, what, it's trying to specify a certain area that you think is the appropriate place to look at next. So, you know, I'm thinking that maybe leaves, is, because that's something that you would use quite often, but also probably just having one subject matter what you would learn with that would apply to other things so for the leaves it's like knowing when they are done what are the different what are the different stages of specifically making that leaf and then at the end as a finish do you put a glaze on as a kind of finishing touch when do you actually decide that it is finished is there certain processes you've got to do before it can be determined as finished? Am I overthinking this? So 
So I'm I'm drawing the veins back in again. Um, I just that's the paintbrush that's the liner. I think. Um, I'm just not. They just don't fit in with putting those really structured lines in don't fit in with the actual overall look of the painting I don't think and I think it's the way I'm doing it it needs to be less it feels like it's very separate from the leaf itself if that makes sense it looks like I've drawn the veins on top of it instead of it being part of the making the leaf in the first place So really all I'm doing is now it really is just sort of heading towards what I call the finishing line. It's um and I just I basically draw the veins in and then I glaze them out and I draw them in again and I glaze them out and that is really what I do for the next couple of rounds. Um Looking at them on the video though, they don't seem as harsh as they did on, you know, in real life, I suppose. Um, but they, they did look harsh. I'm trying to be a bit of cross hatching here to see if I can... I suppose I think that was my way of trying to blend without... By using lines, but it just doesn't. The, these top leaves definitely ended up way over overworked. I think it reached a point where actually it was hard. It just was all blending into itself. The colours weren't staying separate anymore really. But there was also a lot of positive things about this picture. I mean, I've made much more progress in this picture that I'd made, you know, ever before. And there's definitely... I was a lot freer with what I was doing and I was more confident to try new things, like to try putting down three, four, five colours in the one area. Um... And I did have some, some insight into using the techniques and not being afraid to use them at different times. So if I do um, end up doing the 100 day challenge, then surely I'll definitely have a better idea of what I'm doing by the time that that I reach 100. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay, so this is it kind of what I'm calling done. So I feel like I needed more red down here. The, the red in the stalks isn't enough to balance it. It's probably because I've put it up here as well, actually. Mm. Maybe I should have had that more of a paler green. Anyway, it's all trial and error. This is day six of the watercolour challenge. So anyway, like I said, I will link that channel below that I found that was very clear in her explanations. And it wasn't just the, when you first put it down and it's all still wet, it's kind of what you do next and next and next kind of thing. So anyway, 
thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you soon and I hope you enjoyed.